In the time of the Padishah emperors, the Landsrad reigned supreme and governed the flow of the empire. The Landsrad was made up of the greatest noble houses from throughout the human universe. When Paul Atreides became emperor, the influence of the Landsrad shrank. By the time of the God Emperor, the Landsrad was no more. Though the Landsrad would never again dominate the empire, after the death of the God Emperor, some great houses did emerge again, and many fled into the scattering. Many other organizations also sent representatives into the scattering, traveling in all directions into the distant reaches of space. There humankind was free to grow and develop exponentially. Strange things formed within the scattering during the 1500 years between the book God Emperor of Dune and the book Heretics of Dune. The Bene Gesserit sisters who were sent into the scattering eventually lost some of the powers they once had. They joined with the remnants of Leto II's fish speaker army, creating the honored Matres. They were an order of women who maintained power through sexual control. It is hinted that within the scattering they warred with an advanced breed of Tleilaxu face dancers who had liberated themselves from the Tleilaxu masters. The honored Matres referred to them as the ones of many faces. This great war seems to have been devastating on both sides. The honored Matres were also in possession of a weapon, a terrible weapon that would cause mass bloodless death when activated. Apparently much of the weapon's charge was used up before the sisters returned to the old empire. It is not clear whether or not the honored Matres created the weapon themselves, or whether they found it somewhere in the scattering. Considering that they do not know how to produce more of the charge for the weapon, this leads me to believe that this is a weapon of Ixian invention. The Ones of Many Faces also had a weapon to fight the honored Matres. Now you can check out this video I just did on the differences between the Ixians and the Bene Tleilaxes approach to technology. The Tleilaxu focused on biological technology. Their weapon against the honored Matres was called Futars. Genetically engineered humans who possessed feline features. The cry of a Futar was deadly to the honored Matres, but they could only attack if commanded to do so by the handlers. Otherwise, they were docile. It is heavily implied that the Tleilaxu organizational structure quickly fell apart within the scattering. It is heavily suggested that the remnants of the Bene Gesserit and fish speakers freed the Tleilaxu females from their terrible slavery. You can learn more about the Tleilaxu females by clicking on this playlist. The honored Matres being partially formed from freed Tleilaxu females would also seem to explain the deep hatred the Matres seemed to possess for the Tleilaxu once they returned to the old empire. The fact that the Matres were said to have fought the ones of many faces and not the Tleilaxu also implies a breakdown in Tleilaxu organizational structure. The face dancers were mules, always, supposedly incapable of reproducing or disobeying the masters but clearly that was no longer the case. And there is other strange technology that formed in the scattering, ways of traveling that no one previously thought possible. Duncan Idaho begins to understand this in the book Chapter House Dune. Somehow he continues to see a vision of a man and a woman. To him they appear to be face dancers. Eventually the Mintet mind within him activates and the full picture becomes more clear. When he finished, he asked himself once more about the visions. Influencing my dreams? What have I tapped? In every spare minute since becoming Teg's weapons master, he had been calling up archival records. There had to be some clue in all of that massive accumulation. Resonances and tachyon theory held his attention for a time. Tachyon theory figured in Holtzman's original design. Techies, Holtzman had called his energy source, a wave system that ignored light speed's limits. Light speed obviously did not limit fold spaceships. Techies, it works because it works, Idaho muttered. Faith, like any other religion. Mintat squirreled away much seemingly inconsequential data. He had the storehouse marked, Techies, and proceeded to go through it without satisfaction. Not even guild navigators professed knowledge of how they guided fold spaceships. Ixian scientists made machines to duplicate navigator abilities, but still could not define what they did. Holtzman's formulae can be trusted. 
No one claimed to understand Holtzman. They merely used his formulae because they worked. It was the ether of space travel. You folded space. One instant you were here, the next instant you were countless parsecs distant. Someone out there has found another way to use Holtzman's theories. It was a full Mintat projection. He knew its accuracy from the new questions it produced. Duncan's Mintat mind projects that someone in the scattering must have discovered a new way to move through space and time. They existed beyond a net of light, as if they were somewhere parallel to the normal universe, or on top of it. At the end of Chapter House, the pair can be seen watching the protagonist of the book, as if they are themselves outside of the story, outside of time. In Children of Dune, Lato II attempts to explain what time really is to Jessica. He explains that time is not as it seems. How? He asked. Unless you understand that time isn't what it appears, I can't even begin to explain. My father suspected it. He stood at the edge of realization but fell back. Now it's up to Ghani and me. I insist that you explain, Jessica said, and she figured the poison needle that she held beneath the fold in her robe. It was the gum jabar, so deadly that the slightest prick of it killed within seconds, and she thought, they warned me I might have to use it. The thought of it sent the muscles of her arm trembling in waves, and she was thankful for the concealing robe. Very well, he sighed. First, as to time, there is no difference between 10,000 years and one year. No difference between 100,000 years and a heartbeat. No difference. That is the first fact about time. And the second fact, the entire universe, with all of its time, is within me. Leto's musings about time imply deeper meaning to time than we previously thought. Perhaps time is malleable, even. Had the ones of many faces truly found a way to exist beyond time? If so, it would explain how they devastated the Honored Matre Empire, forcing them to flee into the old empire. No one truly knows how the Holtzman effect operated, and only that it was effective. The Ixians have not penetrated Holtzman's unification concept, he said. They merely use it, a theory that works even when you don't understand it. The implication here is that the Holtzman effect has far more potential than anyone ever thought, perhaps only Leto realized. Time travel may be possible in the Dune universe, at least to some extent, but that subject deserves its own video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe for more Quinn's ideas. Hey guys, you should totally click that link in the description and follow me on Twitter.